science and society. Why I want to make a difference around the world. People say we only have one life, but combined, there are many lives shared between the human species currently living on our very small, vulnerable planet. We need to love this planet and use our science to protect it. As Greta Thunberg, a 16-year-old Swedish climate activist, once commented on her school chart, some say I should be in school, but why should any young person be made to study for a future when no one is doing enough to save that future? What is the point of learning facts when the most important facts given by the finest scientists are ignored by our politicians? I believe that this quotation captures the essence of my TED Talk today. My name is Mary Malkipi. I am 15 years old and a female science enthusiast. Ever since I was about six years old, I remember quizzing my dad with tons of questions, such as, why does the moon shine so brightly? Or why do the stars appear to be brighter in the desert than at home? And how are our ancestors able to live in this heat? I specifically have a vivid memory of looking at the startlingly bright moon under a peaceful night sky in the desert and asking him, why was the moon a different shape last week than it is this week? My dad looks at me, obviously delighted that his daughter was as fascinated in the world as he once was as a child. He then gave me a full and detailed explanation of the moon cycle, which I still remember. From a young age until today, whenever I ask a question, my dad has never failed to answer appropriately and as fully as I can understand. He has been feeding my love for science and my curiosity advances until this day. I have always been inspired by our beloved leader, the Vice President of the United Arab Emirates and the ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who said that the Emirates' prominence, competitiveness, and sustainability depends on its uh, ability to continue attracting skilled and talented people and nurturing the brightest minds to generate innovative ideas. It really saddens me to read that, that less than 30% of the world's researchers are female. Female scientists are paid less, published less, and do not advance in their careers compared to their male counterparts. But on a more positive note, encouraging women to work in STEM is a major step forward because according to the UAE's Vision 2021 national agenda, the UAE will become a competitive knowledge economy. It will achieve its goal by promoting innovation and research and development. According to the UAE's Ministry of Higher Education, there was a witness 70% increase in women majoring in engineering between 2005 and 2010. And now, this is not only because engineering holds such a street disposition in the UAE, but the notion that engineering is only for men is changing, an idea driven by a forward-thinking government. This follows the special vision. This special vision was delivered by a person who is dear to the hearts of all Emiratis, the founding father of my beloved country, Sheikh Zaid bin Sultan al Nahyan. In his own words, he said, Nothing makes me happier than to see women assume the rightful role in society and fulfill their potential. Nothing should stop the progress of women. Women have equal rights to men in assuming top positions that benefit their abilities and qualifications. And while most of you may be aware of some famous female scientists, I would like to draw your attention to an outstanding woman in the STEM field. Aisha Mansouri. Aisha Mansouri is the first female Emirati pilot who flies A380s, one of the world's largest passenger aircraft. Her inspiring words keep ringing my ears, and she said, women can be whatever they want to be. That's what I think my example shows. All women should follow a career path that inspires them and makes them happy. Science is all around us. It is discovered and developed through our curiosity as to why the world is the way it is. As Carl Sagan, an astronomer and astrophysicist, once commented, science is a way of thinking much more than it is a body of knowledge. I have been studying music, both at school and at home, and have found a correlation between math and music. The basics of math promote logical thinking, problem solving, and noticing patterns. These same skills are shared in music, for example, like sight reading of musical notes, which requires logical thinking skills. And while playing the piano, I often wonder about the placement of keys of the unknown key while searching for a familiar pattern in my mind, just like algebra. The placement of the keys and the counting of the beats clearly links to maths. Applying science to something as artistic as ballet has brought me immense fulfillment. I started learning ballet recently, and while learning pirouettes, I wondered about the physics behind it. I researched thoroughly at home and found out that the angular momentum, which is the amount of rotation, equals the inertia multiplied by the angular velocity. To explain further, when my arms were extended, there was a larger inertia to a smaller angular velocity, which meant slower turns. 
However, when my arms were closer to my axis of rotation, there was a smaller inertia to a larger angular velocity, which resulted in faster turns. I love how science can be traced as being the basis of all things, even making my much beloved cup of tea. I've had the benefit of inspirational science teachers that have supported my learning. For example, when asking, why does chlorine have two isotopes? The answer was, go and find out, Maryam. Or when asking, how did DNA test show where you're really from? Or what if the magnetic poles moved or reversed? My teachers have supported my learning, not by spoon feeding me answers, but by encouraging my own research. When Albert Einstein discovered the theory of relativity, an enormous achievement in itself, did he know that this would lead to calculus, nuclear energy, and GPS? Science is constantly evolving, and society fails to accept this progress. Even today, the conflicts between science and society continue, despite mountains of evidence being available. Science does not take sides, but we have to. Science is a discovery, but what we choose to, that, to do with that discovery is human ethics. Take oil as an example. Oil, a resource very close to our hearts in the UAE, has had obvious benefits. But unfortunately, we have been guilty of overuse. We have depleted our resources and are polluted our planet in our eagerness to use it. This situation is similar in case of fossil fuels. But in recent years, we have devised improved ways that are kinder to our fellow inhabitants of the Earth and kinder to our planet. The UAE has taken bold steps towards renewable energy sources, and I am so proud of the progress we are making along this path. Mustard City is a global energy resource leader, which is located in Abu Dhabi. And this city um, aligns perfectly with the UAE's Vision 2021 of sustainable environment and infrastructure. And now we have a long way to go, but recent developments from the reliance from oil to solar power are making our small part of the planet a role model to other less aware countries. Together with our commitment to recycling, we are making a cleaner planet for future generations. Expo 20, uh, Vision 2021 sets the UAE standards to follow to become a great nation, able to flourish, uh, a flourishing economy which is able to uh, invest in future science. And now, I hope that I'll be able to make a meaningful contribution to my country. Today, I am not advocating all science, but I'm advocating a change in perspective. Instead of the dangerous tightrope act of trying to appease society that burdens us scientists, I ask of you to look at us as achievers agents of the future, and a face of better living for tomorrow. And to finish, I'd like to add some humor. After all, science is not dry, dusty, and dull. It is fun, invigorating, and totally fulfilling. As I hope you're all aware with George Lumet's Big Bang Theory, I would like to quote Sheldon, a character from the Big Bang Theory TV show. Basinga, thank you so much for the opportunity to share my love of science. <laughs>